For too many years, families of children with devastating illnesses have felt helpless as they watched their child suffer. Today, they're taking matters into their own hands and finally finding relief, treating their child with cannabis. This is One Family's Story. Welcome to another episode of Love Love and Cannabis. Cannabis. I am Nina Simmons. And I am Osiris Stephan. And we are the proud parents of Aiden Aiden Stephan. Hey, everybody. How's it going? Welcome to another episode. Hello, hello, hello. I'm hoping all of you out there are doing well, despite of what's going on out there with the coronavirus. Oh, my God. I hope you are safe, your family is well, you're well, and that you guys are holding it down. And um, it is a different world out there. It definitely is. But we want to say happy 420. Yes, definitely want to at least have a you know a ray of light or shining upon us that it is 420. Yes. Uh, something to look forward to, something to numb us <laughs> while we go through this. But um, most importantly, one of the things I did want to share before we get started is the sudden passing of Charlotte Fiji. Uh, for some of you who may not know, Charlotte was suffering from Dravet syndrome, and uh, the parents were basically running out of options to treat her for that, including the seizures that she was having. Like she was having grand malls, which were like averaging anywhere between an hour and hour and a half to almost two hours. Uh, which is like complete convulsions, if you can imagine a seizure. The ones with your body is locked and sometimes you're foaming at the mouth. And she had recently passed away from a grandma that turned into a cardiac arrest. So um, the Stanley brothers wanted to give them a shout out for basically supporting Charlotte with creating the Charlotte's Web strain and helping her at least enjoy the time that she was here on this planet with us. I mean, she was an inspiration to us and our family, especially with Aiden and what he was going through. Um, we we were we were just really heartbroken by it. Uh, I remember when Nina shared the story with me; it kind of hit me with like a brick. Yeah. So just to give some backdrop, so some people may not know her story. She's they were the pioneers of CBD. Mm. They had um, one of the most watched specials. Um, when they talk, she talked about how CBD helped her daughter, and that was like their last resort. Yeah, you know, it, she was it was the breakout, you know, kid for CBD. Went and she called. She happened to make it more acceptable for people. Yeah, I had um, my eighty year old aunt call me after watching her special. Oh, you should try CBD for Aiden. This is before Aiden's seizures got really bad. I was like, what? Like, huh? Like, I didn't. Didn't understand it at that time. So I'm talking about a pioneer, the family. So it hits the cannabis community really hard, her passing. Yeah, it definitely does. I mean, so young, you know, and you think that somehow you're going to pull out of it, that she's going to be okay. But it also goes to the point where I had shared with someone, I said, you know, cannabis is, uh, you know, CBD oil is not the all in all. It is something to help your body do what it does naturally. And it also requires other things. And for her to pass the way she does, and the way she did, and especially in her mother's arms, it's, it's heartbreaking. Because I know for us, um, Aiden sleeps with uh, myself. And so for me to keep an eye on him, there's times he does have grandmas in his sleep. There's nights I don't sleep thinking, hey, you know, will he stop breathing and sleep? Will he have a grandma that he can't come out in the middle of the night? So it's a parent's nightmare. It is a nightmare, yeah. And I, so I feel for them. I really do feel for them. It's a nightmare. And you always have that risk when you have a child with epilepsy, you know, that, you know, can this seizure take them, you know. You're, and it's, it was it hit us hard. It's very scary. And Yeah, yeah. It, 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 my prayers go out to the family. Yeah. It does. Because I, as a parent myself going through as we're going through it, it's it's hard. It's hard, and I can only imagine. Especially, her fight had became their champion, their you know their shield. There's something that they were going through, and they were helping so many people, and they were giving people, you know, especially so many children. Actually, they gave them options. Yeah, healthy uh, options. Exactly, and the CBD helped her tremendously. She wouldn't probably have been alive this long. No, no, I have to agree. I have to agree on she that. She lived. Uh, 
almost she's about 13 right she started to cbd at six or seven six or seven wow mm-hmm. wow okay yeah i know aiden we, aiden we started aiden about two and a half mm-hmm. yeah two and a half not even three years old we started yeah. at two and a half so you know it's like one of those things where it's tough it's tough so we definitely um put our pr- put, prayers up exactly you know it's um we're thinking about you. We didn't forget you. You will never be forgotten for what you've done, Charlotte. Definitely have not. You inspired many. Thank was... you very, very much for your strength. Yes, the Fiji family as well. Be well. Love you. Uh, just stay strong. Stay strong. It's not over. There's many more children out there that could definitely use your love and support. Now, moving on to the 420. It is upon us. Yes, and, but it's different this year. So. Yeah, it seems. I don't know. Part of me feels that it's like uneventful. Well, yeah, <laughs> <laughs> quarantined. Yeah, I mean, it's not like I don't mind me lighting up with you, but it's not the same when you have like a, so many different personalities that have this common bond with this date. Well, I mean, everything was canceled, dude. Oh, Cyrus. So yeah, that I mean, I understand mm. that, but <laughs> I'm saying that in the past when we were free. And we gathered, there were so many different, I mean, the, the, imagine a plant that brought so many people together from different backgrounds, ethnic, race, culture, um, I mean, even um, status quo. Everybody was, it was just like this spectrum, there was like a rainbow of different personality, different type, who would normally probably would not even associate with each other, but the fact that the plant brought them all together, like yeah. this common interest and bond. So some people use 420 as to, um, to smoke and celebrate the plant that way. Yes. And then um, some people use it for advocacy. Mm. We did. Which we have. In yeah, the past. which we had in the past. We can get into that. That was really interesting. Yeah. There actually, is a follow-up on that. Yeah, so we used it for advocacy for medical and recreational. Yeah. We, yeah, we've been out there. We've been rather busy for a while. <laughs> yeah. yeah. It was really hectic. Um, I've done panels. So have you. Yes, we've been um, part of panels, discussions. Just talking about the municipal side. Marches, protests. Okay, yeah. Oh, my God. been quite eventful. Mm. And we meet different people, uh, lawyers, like you said, doctors. Everybody, yeah. It's 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 fascinating because I've, I've mentioned this before in our previous uh, podcast in the sense that how much this plant has empowered us in a way where I would never thought I would be a, I, I can't say, I don't want to say, but I will say it like a revolutionary in a sense mm-hmm. that I don't accept what people tell me. It's like now I'm in more of control when it comes to using a plant to help my son. It's because I was able to educate myself. It gave me a sense of confidence a uh, sense of more of education, not even a sense, an actual education, an actual knowledge of what is it this plant can do and what it can contribute. At the same time, allow me to have conversations with people that I may not have wanted to have those conversations with in a sense that, okay, uh, sure, I'll take whatever you say. Yeah, doc, okay, you want me to give him more pills? You want me to do this? You want me to do that? Whatever. But now it's like, okay, here is what we're going to do. This is what I need. So now we are approaching our practitioners with our game plan and what we're going to do that's empowerment that's literally empowerment because it's always been the other way around also we've um taken aiden that actually uh took aiden up to albany for a protest during a school week yet it actually was a school day i said you know what we're going up to albany we're going to a protest and so we went up to a rally we literally went up to a rally and it's like wow how much this plant has you know really influenced us and one of uh, a friend of mine that i have uh, she works for cure relief they invited us to one of their rallies in albany to expand the medical marijuana program in new york and we participated in that yes cure relief is a dispensary yeah in new york in new york yeah, yeah. but they're everywhere actually they're spending i think they have like anywhere between 10 to 15 dispensaries yeah they're everywhere the i don't i can't tell they you they have where. licenses yeah, yeah, yeah they're, they're everywhere so they they were a big dispensary, so we went out with them to yeah, Albany. Yeah, they sponsors us to come up there to, to support. To rally and lobby for more dispensary licenses. Yes, more licenses and more dispensaries. Yeah. But what's interesting is that they have 10 
specific dispensaries and they're allowing them to expand. So the program needs some work. It needs some transparency in what is it their game plan is. And so we'll be fighting for that. But on a bigger plan, I think back when would did we do our press conference? It was in April because it was right before the um, budget hearing mm-hmm. in Albany. So it was in the week of April, April 16th, because it was four days before the 2420. This is how it's an amazing timeline. So back in April of 2018, mm-hmm. uh, we had put together a bill that basically was called the Tonshin's Bill, where um, it would allow children who are in the cannabis, the medical marijuana program, sorry, the medical marijuana program to be able to receive their medicines while they're in school, whether they're either at camp whether at a uh, facility for drug treatment or whatever the case may be, but the children would be able to receive their medicine because the issue that we were facing is that my wife and I, Nina and I, were working at two different locations and we would have to go to the school, administer the, uh, the CBD, and then go back to work, which was basically non-sustainable. I think, what was it, the nursing agency that we had used for Aiden was not willing to do so. And then what else? The schools were not even aware of anything about it. So there was a lot of misunderstanding, miseducation, and just basically out of the loop. And so the bill was created for that, just for that purpose. And that happened in April. So it was like four days before 420. So the timing was like, wow. But if you know who we are, Nina and I, we're not those type of people that really go out there and just be like, rah, rah, let's fight for this, this champion. But we saw the need for it, and it all started with this plant, this understanding that this plant is a part of us that needs to be treated as such as it has its own rights, and we have to create rights for it to support it. And whether it's recreationally or medicinally, we need to have it as part of our life. Exactly. So that's what we use 424. Yeah. To kind of, you know, promote and advocate. Yeah. So. Let me ask a question. Do you ever thought you would be where you are now right now with cannabis? I mean, because I know when we first met, you knew nothing about it, really. Nothing. And so look at at you now. It's like, what do you think? You just don't know where your your path is going to take you. Yeah, exactly. It's it's incredible. Yeah, same here. Um, Same here. It's It's funny that a lot of like undercover cannabis users in my family will come out. You know, oh, yeah, talk to me up. on the side because they know I'm okay and I'm definitely not judgmental. Um, no, yeah, it no. Can't it, be. I think that's one of the things I have to say. We wanted to hide it because I think there was that stigmatism yes, that we worried in the about beginning. in the beginning. But we're like, no, this is my child. I don't care if they're gonna have an issue with it. I don't want them around me. Yeah, and that was that was seriously my attitude. Was like, this this is about my family. This is about my child. I, I don't want you around me. If you're not supporting us, you're not with us, then you're against us. You yeah. don't need to be around. And especially, we're the ones with him. We are his caregivers. We don't get help from any from outside of us. Yeah, no government we, assistant. Well, not even that. Like, it's not, like, what? <laughs> I'm just saying, you know. Oh, my God. Got, I'm talking you know, about, like. check. I could go no, get some back. I'm talking like, about, like, babysitting or, like, you know, yeah. when people live with a yeah, aunt and uncle and grandma yeah. and I, yeah, so we just us. So for me, we saw how it worked. Yeah. So it was like no one telling us that this is not going to help our child. I remember Aiden was having like these mild twitches, which are seizures. Some people may not even know. Yeah, um, that was crazy. And I just put a little bit, like I've said in prior off, um, episodes, I just put a little bit on his feet and the twitching stopped. I said, whoa, this stuff works. Yeah. So it was like, okay. I'm you sold. Know, we're sold. Like, come on. So it was like, I get like Osiris said, if you're not down with it, then kind of like aside. step aside. Kind of like your problem, not mine. Yeah, I, you know, it's, the funny thing is, after a while, I started making excuses. I used to apologize when Aiden would have a seizure or something would happen. I'm like, oh, I'm sorry, sorry. That he you know he just had a seizure. And after a while, I'm like, what the hell am I apologizing for? Mm-hmm. Like, I'm apologizing because I want to make you comfortable. No, you have to have some type of empathy to understand as a parent. Because, you know, there's always the stories like, you know, you don't want to take your two or three-year-old out because, you know, the terrible twos. You don't want to take them out to dinner <laughs> because of their behaviors or because they can't do it. 
our thing is that we couldn't take them out because of the seizures because you just didn't know what was going to happen. Yeah. And how intense and how much it affected him. And it was inten- it was it was crazy for a while. But having gone through what we've gone through, I don't know if I would change anything. I, I, I it's like I wrestle with the idea because because of this plant, because of what I've become and what we've done in this realm. It's made me into something else. Made us into something else. It's given us a different perspective on life. It's empowered us. It made me feel more confident in the things and the decisions I need to make, especially around him, and willing to take chances. And also not to trust those people who say, yes, trust us, take our medication, take this prescription, and things like that. So it's like, you know what? I am involved. We are, we are involved in the whole process from start to finish. And we're also stating, you know, these are the things that we're going to do. These are the things that we want to do. But the history of it all is mind-boggling of how 420 came about. Something so simple become what it is today. Exactly, yeah. So um, so 420 it was started actually in the 1970s by a group of high schoolers. Uh, So uh, a man, a gentleman named Waldorf Steve was given a treasure map to a patch of weed on the Point Rise Peninsula. Uh, So they were given this map, a group of boys were given this map, right? They said, okay, we're gonna go and find this cannabis patch. So they met up at 420 Mm -hmm. p.m. Um, at a statue in front of their school, they went to San Rafael High School in California, and they met up several times to find this cannabis patch, but they were unsuccessful. But every time before they went, they got high. They never found the patch, but they still use 4:20 p.m. as their code, code and time. It was after school uh, Activity. activities, extracurricular practice was done. They would meet up in front of a statue. Mm-hmm. And find a school and smoke and get high. Oh, so did they smoke before they went on looking for this? Yeah. This pater- oh, so, yeah, they were not gonna find that far. They were not gonna find that land. It, it depends <laughs> what they were. It depends grow. what they were smoking. I guess so. It, it wouldn't even matter. You under the influence. You're not no, funny. but some people are very functional high. Oh. That you know what? I stand. It corrected. depends what you smoke. That's true. I stand corrected. You are correct. There are some people that are. Functional. It depends. What it all depends if it's an in the cup versus a steva, a yeah. mix hybrid, or what strand of what. Yeah, some people definitely can work and rock on some good sativa. Okay, I stand correct. I yeah, apologize. it depends. But I don't I've know what, I don't know what they. I don't know what they smoke. So, but anyway, they yeah, never found something that didn't allow them to find it. They never <laughs> exactly. So they never found it. Uh huh. Um, but they still use the term four twenty. As their time to meet. Yeah. And then they coined the term like, oh, 420. It's like a private joke. Yeah. Like, okay, 420. You know, we're going to 420 today. So that was their time, their their term for smoking and getting high. Yeah, of course. 420. Okay, got it. But it was kind of funny how it spread from generation to generation, from city to city, country to country, across decades and throughout all media all over the globe about this term phrase 420. You know, it's, it's 40, it's almost going to be 40 years old next year. Because yeah. 71, it'll be, next year would be 2020. I know, it's already 50 years old. Is it 50? I thought it was 40, because it came out in 70. Yeah. Holy sh... I'm sorry. Holy crap, you're right, 50. Wow, half a century old. Wow, something so simple. Yeah. Turn into a revolution. <laughs> yeah, so now... That's amazing. I always wondered why 420 versus... Five one or you know so eleven the, two. <laughs> so let me ask a question. So how did when did the evolution go from the four twenty timeline to now four twenty the month and day? I don't know. I don't know when that said. Okay, this is a day we're gonna celebrate cannabis. Yeah. But yeah, this is. I mean, if you there's different people may have also different rationales because some I I even saw that um, some you some. Police force used the term 420 mm-hmm. as a code for... Uh, Busting somebody smoking weed? Yeah. 
<laughs> particularly, you gotta, you gotta particularly in California. Yeah, of but course. don't quote me on that. So don't I figure. mean, we don't I, know. I wouldn't be surprised. We don't know. Probably with LAPD. Yeah, it was, they said California <laughs> particularly, so I don't know. Yeah, that's funny. So what talking about what is that location up in Cal Humboldt County? That's another world. But go ahead. Yeah. So, th- so it became coined, and you know, April twentieth is when. You know, now most of the, most of the nation celebrates it. Yeah, most of the nation, or just because it's not a national holiday. You don't think so? Four four twenty is a cannabis enthusiast holiday. It's not like a national holiday. <laughs> no, 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 exactly. I'm sorry. Yeah, yeah cause I mean, it's but like, people across the nation celebrate. It. Of course, of course, because they cannabis. Yeah, enthusiasts. but it's not like we're gonna get a day off of this. <laughs> exactly. It's like banks are not gonna be closed over. No, right. no, no exactly. Not. That's what I meant by. I mean, that. a lot of people. Don't, I think most people still don't know what it means. No, I, mm-hmm. you know what? Um, I think we're at that stage now where everything needs to go mainstream mm-hmm. and let go of the stigma. And it's only going to it's only going to change as long as uh, people have access to microphones and cameras, and it's used to utilize social media in like in a smart way. Because uh, for the most part, people are still thinking that only criminals, musicians, and uh, stoners or hippies use cannabis, and they don't realize there's people in the mainstream area that are using cannabis. Yeah, I see a lot of people who. Who was sm- smoked a lot and then they stopped. They, they had underlying mental illness yes. that they didn't realize that they were actually self medicating. I yeah. met a young woman like that. She was like, I would have been east either when I was smoking every day or I was taking a heavy, you know, psychiatric drug. So, yeah, that's, oh my God. Because she had an underlying psychiatric illness and mm. the cannabis was kind of. I guess Balancing her out. Yeah. But let me ask you a question. How many, how many pills was she on as a far under the pharmaceutical? She aspect? was not. She was not on any pills. I said oh. she realized that when she stopped smoking, mm. that, that the cannabis was helping with her underlying psychological. So, so she didn't take any pharmaceutical no, drugs. She didn't, she didn't. Oh, she's good. She for her. realized that oh, the cannabis was, was better in treating was, Using oh, so she did it unintentionally. That's what I'm saying. Oh, that she didn't realize that she was self medicating. So like, she was just smoking recreation just to be smoking, yeah, and not realizing she was treating like, yeah. herself. Yeah. Wow, that's amazing. I guess she realized that she felt better, you know. Of but then you that's do. why she kept on doing it. I, I would. I mean, you can't knock it. Mm-hmm. But I mean, cannabis. I mean, you, you know, when you smoke, it's or you get indulged. It's, it's not for everybody. It's for those who would truly enjoy it. Uh, I enjoy looking. I, to be honest, I'll dabble once in a while. I'm not gonna be like, "Hey, over here, over there, all the time." Like, no. But I do love the smell, and I do love the plant itself. Just looking at it, yeah, it's I, like, oh my god, so much. It's like it's so beautiful to see the different types of plants. Yeah, that I enjoy I can celebrate. too. Celebrate, yeah. Um, I do think. I don't like the smell of all weed. I do think certain weeds has a, they all have different smells. Yes. Different tastes. Texture. Different tastes, yeah. texture. And there's some I enjoy the smell. And then some of them, I, I could tell is not. It's not the real deal. Well, not that. It's not something that for me is a scent that I like. It's like perfume. Yeah. Okay. This is, yeah, certain quality. You know, it's just yeah. like there's certain scents that, you know, you may like and certain scents I may not like and mm-hmm. vice versa. Some women like certain scents, you know, some women like, a, you know, it's just a, it's a preference. Yeah, it's a preference. It's definitely a preference. And I think once you realize your preference and strands and you become more knowledgeable about the plant, you'll find for one that works for you. Because yeah, yeah. there's so many. Oh, my God. It's endless. Every time you turn around, it's a new one. If it's not the sativas or the indicas, then it's here we go. Here's a hybrid. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. It's mostly sativa. Then it's mostly mm-hmm. indica. It's like God. It's like you can't keep up. And then some do give you dry mouth. Some don't give you dry mouth. Some, some give make you munchy. Yeah, some give don't. Dry, oh. Some make you really happy. And yeah, some, some make don't. You, and some put you on that couch and just like I'm not moving. Yeah, or make you pensive. Like, oh, or, or the, the others that make you paranoid. <laughs> yeah, so you have to read those ones. I stay away from. Oh yeah, you definitely got. You definitely got to shop around. What's interesting is that I love the ones that would make you very cerebral. Yeah. It just. It just. 
open something in you and it's like these thoughts and ideas come out. You're like, whoa, where the hell did that come from? And you would hope that you have a mic or something in front of you or something to take down because it's like you're spewing this stuff out. And once that's all gone, it's like, ah, oh, jeez, I wish I would have recorded. Oh, I wish I could have taken it down. Exactly. Because it, it, it takes, I, I remember I was talking to a friend of mine, he's in the music industry. And he says, I have to smoke in order for me to really get into my craft. I said, yeah, because you're bogged down from all this interference that you really don't get into who you are and attach yourself to your music or your art form. And that's what cannabis does. It just like gives you that bridge to you and that unknown or that possibility. You just go with it. Exactly. So. I mean, glad he found something that mm-hmm. works for him in terms of getting him to... I think for all of us, get I think into a space. Yeah, but I, you know, truthfully, it's for everybody, and that's what's so special about the four twenty. If you think about it, because right about now, New York City is on lockdown. In fact, the U.S. I'm not gonna say mm. New York City because New York City seems to be like the central focal point of the world. I'm not gonna say just the U.S. And for it to be like almost at a screeching halt is like amazing because. About this time right now, we would ha- be at Central Park last night. Uh, I mean, we're 420. Yeah, we'd be late tonight at Central Park with a bunch of friends and just taking all of it in from 12 p.m. in the afternoon till midnight, or if not, 1, 2 o'clock in the morning. There would be conferences for the weekends, speaking engagement parties, all these things going on to celebrate 420. Nada. I had a buddy of mine go out to the Central Park. He said, I said, hey, how'd it go at Central Park? Because I got stuck doing something. And so I couldn't make it out to Central Park. He's like, I was alone. I lit up. I had fun by myself. And I went home. Yeah, because you're supposed to be practicing social distancing. Yeah, but that's exactly even Even the plant has to submit <laughs> to the Kobo. And it's like, oh, my God. When? So I, I, I'm glad that people are celebrating at home. Yeah, more than so. likely people are celebrating at home, which is a little challenging if you got kids. <laughs> yeah, it's just, you know, mommy, daddy, what are you guys doing? Hey, hey go back to your room. I mean, hopefully they're sleeping. <laughs> yeah, right. Hopefully, <laughs> and some parents are like, I can't wait. <laughs> <laughs> I know this kid's got me. Got me started early. <laughs> yeah, no, I, I agree. I that homeschooling got me doing this early. <laughs> oh, I hear you. I hear you. But um, me. to go back to this, I mean. It's it's amazing that we are where we are right now, where 420 is supposed to be a, a celebration, a revolution, an evolution, in uh, respect to this plant. And it's like, wow, and we can't do it collectively, but does not mean we can't do it in our homes and create something from there and then probably show it outwardly later on. Yeah, opposed Hopefully to- we can make it up, We you know, make up for lost time. I know... 2021 is going to be crazy to make up for it. Because we would have had a parade by now. Yeah, they would have had a parade. Yeah. Oh, my God. There's so many. Because actually, I was slated to be speaking at an event in D.C. Before this broke yeah. out. And it got canceled. Everything is done. Oh, I was supposed to be in D.C. Didn't head out to Colorado. So it's like, wow. Where do we go? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, this quarantine definitely is. Bites. Yeah. I'm sorry. But at the same time, it does make you think about things that you have to change. Like, we can't, you know, go from this. Yeah. We took, we took some things for granted. But yeah. But also, I, I, I have to recognize the fact that there have been people who have lost their loved ones in their lives due to Kovo. So, I want to give out the condolences. We, you know, we want to give out the condolences to the families who's lost a loved one, a friend, or a family, you know, a friend of the families, whatever the case may be, someone that you know that was close to you that lost their lives due to this COVID. So our condolences to you. Also to those who the are... Essential workers. Oh, oh the guys my. on the front lines got to deal with this. Yeah, yeah so I, if, if I didn't resign from my hospital position, I would have been... In the front line. In the front line. And Stressing I me out. I would have been celebrating 420 all day, every day. Oh, my God. I don't on. know how people go and work at a hospital in a major city every day knowing that they could come home and spread 
the coronavirus to their families. I had a good friend of mine who contracted the coronavirus from a patient in the hospital, and she's been sick for three weeks. It's, I mean, it's very scary. It is. It is definitely. I have and a friend of mine. she us. said Go ahead. that she, before going to, before staying home, uh, clearly she's home now, but before that, she would cry at work. You know, these people, they, they go into work knowing that, you know, they could get this disease. And it's stressful. They have to wear a mask. Yeah. All day. I mean, it's one thing we wear a mask, we go out for a little bit or go to the grocery store. Imagine a whole shift. You can't wearing breathe. Wearing a mask, you can't breathe, and their masks are tight. Yeah, so you get that mark on their face. She says, and everything. She was, I can't touch my tongue, I can't laugh. You know, it's hard. And yeah. a lot of them are breaking down. Yeah. It's, it's, you know, I mean, you mentioned your friend. I had my uh, very dear friend of mine. I mean, I've known her since fourth grade. He had recently came down with it. He's a police officer in uh, Man- in NYPD, and he was diagnosed with it. Um, so he couldn't even get a visitor. So his whole family's a quarantine. He couldn't even go in the hospital. So I basically I asked him. I said, "What do you need?" He said, "I just need a few things. If you could bring it." I hopped in a cab. I mean, uh, grabbed the lift. It's got crazy because the products that he wanted was far cheaper than the ride that I took to get to him. Mm-hmm. It was, but. I, I, I just felt compelled to do so because mm-hmm. the last thing I ever want to know is or even hear is that something happened when it could have been prevented, you know. So I, I went out there and got it to him. He what did he want? He was basically wanted the vitamins and um, aloe vera because he wanted to make something to help him through the process because he got tested positive for it. So his whole family got locked down. They didn't go to the hospital. So they basically were at home on their own. They were given some medication, things to take, and he was taking some things too. So he needed some stuff that he was missing in order to prepare, you know, that homeopathic, mm-hmm. you know, brew, and which he, uh, which he wanted. And I was like, okay, whatever you need, I'm there. I think what was it? The day that he told me, I was at his house an hour and a half, two hours later. Now, did he let you in or no? It was like no. A, it's a, funny a delivery on the. St- how did it? Yeah, work? it was a curbside delivery. Yeah. In a sense, because when I uh, when the Lift um, drove up to his house. He happened to come outside. He and his son happened to come outside. They went to get some air mm-hmm. because you know they were confined. And it was like it's stuffy. I needed to come out. We didn't exchange. We didn't talk. I just handed a bag. I said, "Look, from afar, we'll talk. Give me a call later." He said, and he just nodded because he really couldn't talk. <laughs> because the thing, it it was so intense that if he were to talk or try to exacerbate any oxygen into his oh lung, my god, he would cough. Uncontrollably, because we would talk on the phone. And I would make a joke. This is before he got really bad, oh, though. Yeah, yeah, yeah. This is before he got really bad. So when we talked afterwards, and when it started really starting to escalate, he when he laugh, I'd make him laugh. He would cough uncontrollably for like at least good mm. five ten minutes. I was like, you know what? Let's talk when everything settles. So we didn't talk for about two weeks, a week and a half, two weeks. We just text because he couldn't talk. He couldn't exert, exert any energy because it would create this coughing fits because his body was trying to get out. And he was trying to suppress it and it was trying to come out. So it was back and forth. But long story short, his family was ill, but now they're all doing better. They're in recovery stage. So he's doing much, much better. We had spoken uh, a couple of days ago. Any residual, any symptoms still? No, no, no. And right now, it's just you know minor coughs here and there. But other than that, he's he says he's feeling a hundred times better. He said before he couldn't hold food down, let alone even eat food. Now he's able to eat food, sit up, walk about the house. Before he couldn't even do anything. Jesus. Yeah, he said he was like he said it's something that he's never experienced in his life, and he would never want to, and he wouldn't want anyone to experience it. So it's kind of changed him, you know, and. Interesting thing is, is his wife was ill at the time before he was. So she had to postpone her illness <laughs> and deal with her illness to take care of him and then take care of herself. And her kids, you know, they're older. They, you know, they're in their own room, so they had to take care of themselves. So she was tested positive, too. No, that's the interesting thing as a precaution because he was because he's a first responder. <laughs> you know, he's a police officer, so they took care of him, make sure they, they gave him everything first. And for her, she basically was taking care of herself uh, on the gist of what was he was taking. So they both basically was on the same page in the sense of taking care of themselves. But 
they're both recovering. They're both doing well. And it's sad, though, it was, it was the month of her birthday, too. She was supposed to be celebrating her birthday. Yeah. And but, it, now it's not happening. So, But the fact is that she gets to celebrate another year is most important. Yeah, you're right. You, you, I mean, you, can make up, you can make up. I mean, there's there's some positive and negative throughout this whole thing. Yes. Yeah, you know, it's like what you take from it will determine that in the long run. Yeah, this is, and this is what I'm hearing, that the people, some people get it really bad, like your friend. Mm-hmm. And some people, it's not... It's not as bad. Yeah. Oh, interesting thing that you mentioned that. I have a good another friend of mine. I uh, recently told me his mother yeah, got, tested. Had, got tested positive for it. So I'm like, okay, so this is what we're going to do. Uh, he didn't know what to do. He's mm-hmm. like, he's nervous because he had <laughs> his uncle who's staying with him who keeps going in and out of the house, <laughs> drinking out in the streets. So he was concerned about the fact that he's constantly outside in the neighborhood. Is he going to bring it, whatever mm-hmm. this virus is, whatever this thing back to the house and contaminate everybody else? Mm-hmm. This guy's like, I'm Viva La Loca. I'm just going to do me. I'm going to go out in the street and hang out and drink. You guys could stay in the house. And my friend was like losing his mind. He's like, look. And that's his mother's brother. Mm. So it was, yes. Oh. <laughs> so it makes it hard. So he's like, oh my God. Um, so I was like, look, I'll bring you some stuff. So I went, the first thing I did was I went to uh, a health food store, which is right across the street, convenient for me. I got him the zinc and I got the COQ10. Mm. I dropped it off for him. He's like, what is this? And I just explained it to him really quickly. He said, okay, no problem. I said, make sure your mom gets uh, each pill in the morning and one pill in the, uh, each pill in the evening. I just make sure she stays hydrated and relaxed. And he said about four days, she's feeling much, much better. And she also has asthma on top of it. Oh, that's really scary. She has, she has asthma and phlegm. Oh, fibromyalgia. Yes, fibromyalgia. So her symptoms weren't as bad as you. It was, it was like we caught the early stages of it. Mind you, about seven people in her neighborhood mm. had passed away from it. Jesus. Seven. They were like, he sent me video of looking out his window where the ambulances were pulling up and taking out bodies. Oh, Jesus. Yeah, yeah. It was that intense. So he, you could imagine how scared he was about this. And so when I just came up there and really... You know, just gave him those, you know, the pills. I said, look, just give that to your mother. Make sure she stays rested. Just make sure she's, you know, drinking a lot of water and take these vitamins and make sure she stays on top of it. Do some broth. Don't do, you know, I'm giving out specific, you know, recommendations. I'm not a doctor, but I did play one on TV. Clearly. (laughs) Jesus. But, you know, it's like you do your research and reading. You just understand what's going on. It's like, okay, that's what I did. And so... It worked out for him. Oh, so she's in recovery or she's... Yeah, oh, she's great. She's actually eating full meals. She's laughing. She's walking about the house. She's happy. She's good. Okay, so at least she's not... It's, so it's... Yeah, there's, a, there's a, you know, there is a light at the end of the tunnel. Okay. Uh, in the sense of that. So, I mean, you have friends, family, just help them out as much as you can. I know it's hard. Uh, I know Nina stresses me out completely about the idea of me always going out walking around the neighborhood just uh i just have to in fact we did go to the park and we had some family time which was nice well it was pre uh you know 420 (laughs) it's at least i mean aiden deserved it he's been doing well despite being cooped up and i mean for a child you need to get fresh air Mm -hmm. and surprisingly what did we find it was packed i mean Literally, like wow! Short of people pulling out grills <laughs> and barbecuing, I was a little shocked. Like I'm sure. Why the, were you shocked? This is New York. I know, but the mayor probably would not. Oh, the Blasio would like yeah, this. They, the Blasio would lost was, his wig. Okay, we everyone was social distancing, but it was a lot of people still <laughs> in the park. I don't know what you consider social distancing. <laughs> people on a, <laughs> people on bikes are I'm, considered social distancing because they were they were pedaling, so they were further <laughs> away from everybody else. But for the most part, there was people playing in a park, playing with their kids. <laughs> it, it was like the New York that I recall last spring about this time. That everybody was out together, hanging out, laying, trying to get a tan. It was a beautiful weather. And people wanted to take full advantage of it. Yeah, I mean, the bike lane was packed. Aiden couldn't. <laughs> yeah, every, every, I mean, him on a scooter, he was about to get run over. I think, 
It was like New York City was slowly in, like pockets trying to come back. I mean, it it was a great time though. I mean, to be out there and to be with the you know with you guys and just enjoying the weather, enjoying the quality of time. It, it was it was nice. It was different. It really was. It's like so I, I could only imagine. To those prisoners out there who are put in solitary, solitary confinement for a period of time, oh my God, I feel for you because I can't compare our situation into what you are because you're in a what ten by ten cell, and mm. that's it. And we have the freedom of you know doing without. We got TV and everything, and you don't have those you know. So I feel for those guys. Yeah. So you could imagine, you know, you lose. We're, we're losing our mind. And we still had the freedom of a lot of things. Exactly. So it was so funny. Today I'm thinking, I'm like, oh, wait. Once they say that we are quote unquote free, are we going to know how to act and behave? No. <laughs> well, you know what? I have to, I think you mentioned too, I think it's going to be 50 50. I don't know. I think it's going to be, it's going to be a three way split. There are going to be people who are going to be like, I'm not going out. Yes. There are going to be people like, I'm going everywhere. Yes. And there are going to be people like, I don't know. Exactly. So they'll do dibble dabble. They'll do both. Yeah, I think because there's some people right now like that don't even, like, have not been outside. Like, yeah, like there's I some people who are taking it, like, or I had... Um, Full DEFCON 5, right? Like, a friend, he's, she said, my kids have not been outside since March 16th. Is she okay? <laughs> no, the... She's fine. Yeah, I'm just thinking the kids would have probably had you know stronger up or something. <laughs> so the, some people, they had, it's a group of people that it's a group of people that already never want to leave. They'll just go out once a week for groceries and that's it, right? Wow. And then there's your group that will go out every day. That's I see me. Ki- I I'm see, part of that group. I see people with their kids out on scooters every day, um, but they're wearing a mask. They're not there, but they're. In motion, they're not just like sitting still. Sitting still, yes. Yeah. Yeah, so they're not conversation with anybody. Just keep it moving. Is, yeah, and so that there's that group, and then there's another group who you know are not wearing their masks. Act like there's all in that group. Sorry, there's like nothing is happening. Yeah, so, like, they're <laughs> kept in oblivious. They're like <laughs> whatever. You know what day. I mean? So um, I think those groups are gonna f- fall into certain categories. When we're freed. Really? What kind of category were they for? Because, I mean, I can't somewhat fall into that category because I've gone outside without a mask. So you're going to be the people that are going to go everywhere. Without gloves. So you may be the people, once you're we're freed. Oh, I'm hitting the road. Exactly. Oh, you have no idea. Okay, but so. But then the group of people who are not going outside probably are going to say, no, I don't want to be freed, quote unquote, because I'm still scared. So it's gonna be it's gonna be a lot of different views it's gonna be crazy. going on. I mean, oh, I can say I mean, I, what I want and what will happen is that for me, between you and I, if you decide to join me, I plan on ex- visiting every part of this fine city. Really, I, I took it for granted. You know, it's like. How many people could say they could walk out of their street, you know, right into the front of their building and look one way and see the Empire State Building, clearly see the Empire State Building, and go a few blocks away and can see the Yankee Stadium? Or look the other direction and can see the George Washington Bridge. Like, you could see these places. And I've never really taken a chance of walking to them or really exploring them. And now, like, having been forced to be locked down, do understand I have my calendar set up. I am out. Okay, guys, it's on. It's on a record. Yeah, I am. Cause out. Th- this is a guy that I will have to drag places. Uh, you don't have to. Drag I said, like, let's me. go here. No, ask. let's go here. No, okay. Where where are we going? Ugh, why are we doing this? It's like pulling, in my opinion, like pulling teeth to. Why well, gotta be teeth? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, I just said you didn't state your case. <laughs> I have to state a case. Come on, why? No. <laughs> what? Uh, yeah, all right. Yeah, so I'm not a going, going out kind of guy all the time, all right? Some <laughs> adventure sort. You know, you come home because, I mean, you work for so many hours after a while. It's like, look, I just want to decompress and go to bed, watch a TV, have a beer, put my feet up. Hey, if I want to light one, light one. But I have to respect those who do go out and be adventurous and enjoy the world mm-hmm. because having been locked down for the time that we've been locked down, yeah, it's on. It is so on. I'm so good in the green light. And what's interesting is that we have a number of parades that are supposed to be coming up. 
What's supposed to happen in May? It's supposed to be the Israeli party or Israel party. It's not I mean, happening. Par- parade. I'm sorry, not party. It's but not parade. happening. Then is the Puerto Rican Day Parade in June. I doubt that's happening. Listen, listen, De Blasio. If he knows what's good for him, he better figure something out because you're talking about two cultures that bring a boatload of money to the to the city. Mind you, he already said on the news that we've lost about ten million dollars. Yeah, but he's canceled St. Patty's Day Parade. St. Br- Patty's St. Patty's Day Parade had to. It was like in the middle of it all. <laughs> We're in the tail end of this thing. Do you know what I'm saying? So I'm assuming that the Israel um, the Israel parade is supposed to be happening between May and June. Not happening. Dude, it's so happening. And okay, mind you, the Puerto, be- the Puerto Rican Day Parade happens in June. There's no I'm telling you right now. If this city wants to get a jump start, a kick in the ass to get the economy going, they need to have that parade. They need to have these two parades. We'll see. And they need people to support it. I mean, granted, the fear's there, don't. But you know what? If we don't, we will submit, and the economy is gonna. It's just. It's just gonna get ugly. It's just. It's just gonna get ugly. I mean, they already just said. Recently in the news that New York City's uh, unemployment just completely imploded from all the submissions. Yeah. So we'll see. We'll see what happens, guys. Uh, all right. I'll just, we'll I, I'll just put it out there. I'm just saying. I'm just putting it out there. But we can report most... back in June during one of our episodes to see. June? I'm going to be out in the streets. You're going to be recording me live out in the street shaking my ass. Going nowhere. Because <laughs> the city's really? still going to be really? shut down. <laughs> I don't know. I say we take a bet. Oh yes, let's do it. Let's take a bet. Okay, bet we reopen with and we get a parade in June. In June. Okay, fully reopen. Fully reopen in June with a parade. What's your thought? Still a lockdown. <laughs> you lose. You'll see. Well, te- all right, ladies and gentlemen, listen to our June episode. Ladies and gentlemen, you guys heard the bet. I am going for the fact that we're going to reopen in June and have a parade. Nina stating that we are not going to do anything, and we're just going to sit in our homes just like where we are now, <laughs> yes, <laughs> and and just binge watch the hell out of Netflix. Is that what you're saying? Yeah, that's what I'm saying. You get some subscriptions up, your Hulu, your Apple TV, and everything up because we're going to be indoors for a while. All right. Well, guys, it's been great. Um, we're definitely gonna. Talk about some other things that are going to come up. We actually, I have to apologize. We were scheduled to have an interview mm-hmm. with a good friend of mine, uh, Scott Giannotti, who really put us on the track of where we are with uh, helping Aiden and becoming advocates for the industry. He wasn't able to make it, so hopefully we'll uh, catch up with him in another episode. But um, we're also going to have some surprise guests. I have a few people who are re- interested in interviewing for the show. And I think they will definitely bring an added uh, flavor to it and also as opposed in the sense of entertainment as well. Well, thank you guys. Be well, be safe. Uh, Just keep your guys, you know, your eyes and hearts open and definitely take care of yourself uh, until the next episode. All All right. Happy 420. Yes. Ciao. Bye. Thanks for tuning in. Another episode of Love and Cannabis. I'm Osiris Stephens. And I'm Nina Simmons. Be strong. And stay empowered.